I like to soften it. I do. One of the reasons there's so many techniques to do. Yeah. And today we're gonna go over some. Boom, 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 boom. Mm -mm -mm. I don't even know what I'm doing. Hey y'all y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carrie. This is where I talk about knitting, my tips, my tricks, my opinions, and my preferences. And we are still in Socktober in November. Although truthfully, it can be Socktober any time of year if you just love knitting socks the way I do. Well, today is for the people who love to knit their toes from the cuff down. Because one thing about knitting your sock from the cuff down is you get to the end, of the toe and oftentimes especially if you use a wedge toe shaping technique you have to close your last stitches and it usually calls for doing a certain graft that I don't know the name of but that is Kitchener stitch <laughs> oh, yeah I know I know I know a lot of people don't love Kitchener stitch and so they avoid knitting cuff down socks just so they don't have to graft the toe at the end or they don't use a wedge toe just so they don't have to graft their stitches at the end well guess what there are other ways to close up your toe stitches than using Kitchener stitch yes there are other grafting techniques there's a bind off technique so today I'm going to show you three ways that you can close your toe no Kitchener stitch involved Hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, give this video a thumbs up, and let's close some toes. Before we jump into the details of the video, I wanna let you know that as always, down in the description box, there will be timestamps to various parts of the video. I always hope that you'll watch through the video at least one time, just one at least. Uh, you never know what fun little moment might happen or there's an additional tip that I discuss. Um, but hey, life is happening and sometimes you just need to get to the details, the specific details. So there are timestamps down below to help you with that. Also down in the description box, you will find a list of materials and resources related to today's video, and these will have clearly marked affiliate links. If you click on one of these links, it'll take you to a shopping website, and if you make a purchase, I might then earn a small commission, and this helps support my channel. If you utilize one of my affiliate links, thank you so much, it's greatly appreciated, and if you don't, it's totally fine, it's no pressure. Um, I'm just really glad that you're watching a video, and if you want to support my channel, the best thing you can always do is hit subscribe. <laughs> Gonna get that one more. Gonna get that one more subscribe plug in. Okay, let's get on with the show. So, uh, if you've been following me for any amount of time, if you watch my live streams, you know this sock. I did knit this from the cuff down, and I just did a wedge toe. And guess what? This toe has a seamless finish, but I did not use Kitchener stitch for this. Instead, I used the Finchley graft. And let me tell you guys, I am in love with this graft. The Finchley graft is much easier to do, I think, than Kitchener stitch. It's easier to memorize, I think, <laughs> anyway. And it gives you the exact same finish. It gives you a stockinette finish to the toe. Here I have a little sample, a little wedge toe. I'm, I, I knitted up these samples in worsted weight so you can clearly see what's going on. So the first thing for the Finchley graft is this is a graft, which means you are basically sewing your stitches together, which means you're gonna need a length of tail. And the rule of thumb is Anytime you're utilizing a technique like this, um, whether it's grafting or a certain kind of bind off, most always what you wanna estimate is about four times the width of the piece that you're grafting together is the length of tail that you want to have. So this should be plenty of tail for me to do my Finchley graft. For the Finchley graft, we're actually going to turn the sock inside out. my tail through 
And now I'm gonna evenly divide my stitches onto the two needles that I have. So I have 12 stitches here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Make sure I'm correct. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So now the Finchley graft is so easy and it's really like just sewing your toe closed from the inside of the sock. So what you're gonna do, uh, here's my yarn coming out from the first stitch on the front needle. And so I'm gonna take my tapestry needle and bring it underneath my two knitting needles and enter the first stitch on the back needle as if to knit. And pull that tail through. And I'm gonna take the first stitch on the back needle off. It's done, it's grafted, it's fine. Now my working yarn is to the back of the sock. So I'm going to bring my tapestry needle into the first stitch of the back needle as if to purl. Then I'll bring the yarn underneath the two needles and bring my tapestry needle into the first stitch on the front needle as if to purl. And I got a little stuck there. Then I'm going to take that first stitch on the front needle I just came through off. Now my yarn is here to the front of the sock again, and I'm going to pass through this stitch, this first stitch on my front needle and the first stitch on my back needle. And it, again, it's very easy to do. You just bring your needle, tapestry needle into the first stitch as if to knit, making sure that you come underneath the needle, knitting needle, and then going into the stitch on the back needle as if to knit. And then this first, this stitch, the last stitch that you go through then comes off the needle. And then to get my yarn back to the front, I come into the first stitch on the back needle as if to purl. Come into the first stitch on the front needle as if to purl, making sure my yarn goes underneath the needle. And then the stitch that I just went through comes off the needle. And that's the pattern of this. It's basically knit, knit, take off the stitch you just came through, purl, purl, take off the stitch you just went through. So I'm going to knit, knit, there we go, take off the stitch I just went through, purl, purl, take off the stitch I just went through. That's all you're doing. It is such an easy graft to do and to memorize. The only thing about this graft is just making sure that you don't tighten up your stitches too much. Uh, if you're going to air on this graft, it's better to air on your graft, your graft being a little too loose. It's much easier to tighten up, tidy up, loose stitches than it is to loosen up tight ones. Oops, it's okay. Stitch came off on its own. <laughs> Just go with it. And now I'm going to finish off. These are my last two stitches. I'm gonna just finish them off by going through both of them as if to knit. And voila. I'm done. And if you look just on the wrong side of the sock, you can see that that looks just like the back of stockinette stitch. But let's turn the sock around and you can see I have a beautiful seamless finish. The other nice thing I find with this Finchley graft is with Kitchener, uh, because you're working on the right side of the work, sometimes you get these little like dog ears, bunny ears, where the graft begins and ends. But I find with Finchley graft, because you're working on this side of the work, on the wrong side of the sock, you don't get that issue at all. And you have a beautiful finish to your sock, no Kitchener stitch involved. Now maybe the Finchley graft still isn't your thing. It's still grafting, it still feels like sewing, it's just not your favorite thing in the world. Well, don't worry, I've got two more options for you. No tapestry needles involved. 
So the next technique that we're going to look at is actually, allegedly, supposedly, a very ancient way to finish socks. According to Capsis in her classic book, Cast On, Bind Off, the zigzag bind off was discovered on an ancient Greek sock. So we're really connecting with our ancestors with this technique. What is the zigzag bind off? Well, um, it's actually a variation of the three needle bind off, but it is stretchier and it leaves this lovely, distinct, decorative zigzag ridge along the front. And according to people who have used this, uh, it's very comfortable under the shoe. This zigzag bind off, even though it creates a ridge, it's still very flat. Now, for this, because this is a bind off and it's a variation of a three needle bind off, you can just work off the ball of your yarn. But since I'm knitting a sample, I do have a tail. So here I have needle, my front needle and my back needle. And all the stitches on my back needle, I will purl. And all the stitches on my front needle, I will knit. So I'm gonna start off. And the first couple of stitches is a bit of a setup. I'm gonna purl my first stitch off the back needle and then come to my front needle oh, that's right and I'm going to knit and now I'm going to bind off my stitch my first stitch so I'm gonna here's stitch one here's stitch two I'm gonna just bring one of my needles into stitch two and pass that over stitch one to bind off and now I'm ready to continue the sequence so I'm gonna purl the first stitch oops, off my back needle. And then I'm going to bind it off immediately. Go. Then I'm going to knit the stitch off my front needle and bind off. That's it, that's all you're doing. And you're gonna continue purling off the back needle, bind off, purl, knit off the front needle, bind off. Just for us English knitters out there, I'll also show how this looks with English knitting. I mean, you're just purling off, you're still doing the exact same thing. Purl off the back needle, bind off, Knit off the front needle. Bind off. Purl. And there you have it. That's what it looks like. And you can see this does create a very distinct ridge at the end of your sock, but it's actually, it's kind of lovely. And even though it forms a ridge, it lays very flat. And so um, it's on the outside of your sock and it's very comfortable, people say. The other nice thing is if you are knitting a cuff down sock and you knit a short row toe, you have to finish off the live stitches between the short row toe and the foot of the sock. And utilizing this type of zigzag bind off does give you a nice decorative edge right there along that line of the socks. The drawback to me for the zigzag heel is it does create this decorative ridge. And if you don't want a decorative ridge, well, this isn't going to be a great option for you. My other issue is it is at the end of the day, a three needle bind off. And I frankly don't love three needle bind offs. Um, through the magic of editing, I, you know, kind of cut out all the difficulties I had. <laughs> with this bind off of my my needle slipping out of the stitches and then just like fiddling with all the needles. It's not my favorite thing in the world. It's not. And so that's why I tend to lean away from the zigzag bind off. But if you like the look of this, um, if you like how stretchy it is 
and everything, this could be a nice option for you to finish off a toe. So this next technique that we're gonna look at is the Russian graft. Now, it's called a graft, but it's not a graft where you sew. And it's really, in some ways, more similar to a bind off, only you don't utilize any, you know, working yarn or tail to bind off. Like, what? Yes, it's true. The Russian graft is somewhat similar to the zigzag graft in the sense that it does create a decorative zigzag line in your sock, but, it isn't, doesn't create the ridge the way that a zigzag bind off does. Um, the Russian graft is flat and almost seamless. Not quite seamless, but almost seamless. Now to do this, A, it helps to have a crochet hook. Uh, you can utilize a crochet hook that is close to the size of the knitting needle you are working with. And I'm just going to use my double-ended crochet hook that I would use for worsted weighted yarn because I have this all the time in my Notions bag. One thing about this graft, however, is that you don't work it with your tail or your working yarn. You actually need your working yarn and tails off to the left side of your graft. If you're working on double pointed needles or two circular needles, this is not a big deal. You just slide your needles so that you're set up to work with your working yarn off to the left and your stitches to the right, but <laughs> I'm working with magic loop. So what I'm going to do, and this is gonna help make this a little bit easier, is I'm going to transfer my stitches onto a smaller needle. Um, and I'll have everything turned the way that I want them. So I'm just, I have this needle here. It just happened to be the one I had handy and it's a size seven, so it's just a little bit smaller. And now I'm all set up to do the Russian graph. So here I have my front needle right here and my back needle. I'm going to come into the first stitch of my back needle as if to purl. Then I'm going to come into the first stitch on my front needle as if to purl. Pull them both on my crochet hook and then I'm gonna just pull that first stitch through the second stitch. And I've bound off my first stitch. Now I'm gonna go in the opposite direction. So now to go forward, I'm now going to go into the first stitch in my back needle as if to knit this time. And I'm going to pull that this is stitch one, stitch two. I'm gonna pull that second stitch through stitch one. Then I'm going to go onto the first stitch of my front needle as if to knit and pull that stitch through, thusly. And I'm going to just keep going into knit, pull through the stitch on my crochet hook, go into the front stitch as if to knit, pull through my crochet, the stitch on the crochet hook. And I'm gonna just keep doing that until all of my stitches are bound off. There go. Now, here are my last two stitches, and here is my tail with my working yarn. I'm going to pull that loop through, but I'm gonna pull through the entire tail to finish off. And voila, there it is, the Russian graft. And you look on this side, you can see it's seamless on the inside of the sock. So you're not gonna feel that zigzag in any way on the inside of your sock. But on the front side, you do have this flat, decorative little ridge. But it's very small, it's right up against the toe of the sock, right? Right up against the toe of the sock. And you got a little bit of this dog here, but to take care of that, I'm just going to take my tail, pull that through, and I will just go take this and pull it through to the inside. Oops. <laughs> to the inside, like that. And that will tack down 
that bit of dog ear and pull that back under and tighten. And there you go. And there you have it. Really nice, easy, like this I think of all of the techniques we looked at is the easiest to do because you're really just utilizing a crochet hook to pull off a stitch from the back, go through the front, and back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The important thing to remember at the beginning is that the first two stitches, the first stitch on the back needle and the first stitch on the front needle, you go through to purl. But after that, every stitch you enter as if to knit. And you just you zigzag your way down. I think the only real downside to the Russian bind off is like it helps you use a crochet hook so you're getting another piece of equipment. <laughs> That's kind of it. Uh, I think the only real downside to it is if you want a real seamless finish, well, the zigzag bind off isn't going to give you a completely seamless finish the way the Finchley Graft will. So uh, just to finish up, let's just take a quick look and compare the three different toe finishes that we looked at today. First of all, we do have the Finchley Graft, which visually is the same as a Kitchener stitch. It just does it in a different way. Um, I really do like this finish a lot. I think that it gives it that beautiful seamless finish as if maybe you did start from the toe of your sock and worked your way up. Um, it's very comfortable, pretty straightforward to do. The only downside to me of this is you just got to be careful with your tension, making sure you get good tension of those stitches that you're creating with the tapestry needle. Uh, to me, the only downside of the Finchley graft is if you just really hate crafting in general or don't like using a tapestry needle, um, in which case, you know, this may not be your cup of tea. But if you really like crafting, you don't mind crafting, um, I think this is a great, great alternative. Then we have the zigzag stitch. Now, the zigzag stitch is the one that has the most pronounced finish it to it. Like that's clearly, there's definitely a ridge there. Whether you like that ridge, whether you see it as a decorative choice is a matter of personal taste. One thing to remember with this is that I'm showing you this on a worsted yarn so that you could clearly see what was going on. But if you were to do this type of craft on a sock weight, fingering weight yarn, this ridge wouldn't be so pronounced. Uh, I do think that you have to be a little bit careful with this at the end to make sure that this last stitch over here doesn't get real sloppy and you're going to have to make sure that you, you know, do a nice job in the end of weaving in this tail so that this final stitch lays flat. But to me, the big drawback to this zigzag bind off is the fact that it's a three needle bind off. Personally, I don't care for three needle bind offs. I find them very futzy, but your mileage may vary. If you really like a three needle bind off or you don't mind three needle bind offs, you like the decorative ridge that this creates, this might be a really great option for you. And finally, we have the Russian graft. The Russian graft and the zigzag graft are very similar. They create that same zigzag um, detail, but the Russian graft is a much more discreet, subtle detail than the very obvious ridge that the zigzag graft creates. Personally, if I were to choose between the zigzag bind off and the Russian graft, I would probably choose the Russian graft. I mean, the Russian graft is just very easy to do. I like the discrete zigzag result of it. What I can say is I do think, after having done all three of these techniques, I think that all three of them are a better alternative to Kitchener Stitch. There's part of me that goes, why? Aren't these more popular? Why don't we discuss these options more often with sock knitters? Because frankly, I think all of them are easier and more straightforward to do than Kitchener Stitch. They're easier to remember how to do them. Um, and yeah, looking at it, I can't think of any advantage of Kitchener Stitch over Finchley Graft for sure. Like the results between Finchley and Kitchener are the same results but I think Finchley is easier to do, <laughs> so.
That's the great thing about knitting. There's always other options. If one technique doesn't work for you, you can always find another technique that's gonna get you a great result and you can enjoy your knitting that much more. So that is it for me today. I would love to hear from you. What are your favorite ways to finish sock toes? Um, do you prefer just to avoid wedge toes altogether or, or knitting cuff down socks altogether so you don't even have to worry about all of this? Or is there a technique for finishing toes of a wedge toe that I don't know about and didn't cover today? I would love to hear about it. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and if so, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your other knitting friends. Liking videos, sharing videos, commenting on videos are all great ways to help support my channel and let YouTube know that this is a place worth checking out. And of course, if you have not already, please make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Hitting subscribe and the notification bell will make sure that you never miss my latest video or live stream. I hope that you have a wonderful day, evening, weekend, weeknight, whenever you may be watching this. And as always, happy health and happy crafting. Bye. Generally, mostly what you find I are either with these. So the next. So it's very easy to. So this craft. Three little toe tips sitting here. <laughs> Sorry, real quick, one last plug. Right now, coming up are a couple of video suggestions. Uh, if you click on one of those videos, you'll get to spend some more time with me. And if you're like, Carrie, gotta run for the day. No worries, but if you hit subscribe, I will show up in your feed. And you got one more chance to hit subscribe. There's a little picture down in the corner. Click on that picture. You can subscribe to my channel and never miss a thing. Never miss a thing. Okay, I'm done. <laughs>